everyone, please relax. We're here. The boys are back, and we're doing another episode of Loud About Nothing. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. It's me. It's your boy, okay? That thotty boobody, okay? The fucking smoke show himself, the hottest dude in the podcast game, okay? CBS Provolone, Sebastian Canelli, all right? Okay, okay, okay. Everyone calm down. Wow. He's here. He's here. Who Ben Affleck used to be, okay? <laughs> the cute boy himself. Cupid must have fucking struck me in the ass with an arrow last night because I'm catching feelings, all right? <laughs> I'm catching feelings. And that's confusing because it's my nephew, okay? <laughs> it's my fucking nephew, the cute boy, Robbie. Robbie, say what's up. What's up, Sebastian? Happy Valentine's. <laughs> this is a Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day. That's a, there's an Outcast song, Happy Valentine's Day. Nice. I love that. Yeah, it's a great song. Everybody should listen. But this is our Valentine's this, Day special. Yes, this is our Valentine. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Everyone, I want you. Oh, OK, let's open that. Please. I hope you've been uh, opening that Chianti. I hope that you've been you got a nice charcuterie board in front of you. I hope that you, your bats are bubbled and your feet are cozy because you're about to settle in. To loud about nothing Valentine's Day episode, okay? Yeah, so and this, this is, is great not if you're single. Great, great if you're in a relationship. Whatever it is, it's a great listen. Great to tell your friends. Oh, you know you could do Valentine's Day. Listen to this great podcast. Very yes, very great single activity. Maybe even better if you're in a relationship. You get to laugh at some of the stuff that we have today. And this is special because this is our first episode that we're introducing. Loud about nothing plus. Okay, this is officially <laughs> loud about nothing plus. We gotta and keep what up is, with the times? We got to keep up with the times. Robbie goes, oh, uh, he says, look, uh, he goes Paramount, Paramount plus. plus. Uh, we got Disney plus. We got All Apple the pluses TV plus. And you know what? When I see like something like that, I think in my head, I go, sometimes moguls, because we're moguls. Sometimes yes. moguls, we create trends, but other times. We just have to fucking hop on the trend. And we are just hopping on the trend as moguls, okay? So this is our first episode of Loud About Nothing Plus. And I was thinking, right? What is Plus? What is Disney Plus? It's the collection of all the great works that Disney has done, brought together into one streaming platform, brought together into one giant catalog. So in this episode, we are fucking marvel we are forming together we are calling in all the hotties our plus is the hotties are calling in and we are <laughs> taking calls the whole fucking episode yes. our plus is the smoke shows calling in okay you say who am i in your world maybe you're the simpsons but also maybe you're Nat natural geographic and you know what we need both of you okay yeah. <laughs> we got the whole hottie boo body army we got a ton of calls so we got to get to them as soon as possible, but I'm excited. We have we have some pretty awesome listeners. I'm excited too. This is so exciting. I'm so excited to be sharing uh, Valentine's Day with the hotties. I have not listened to these calls. Robbie has. This yes. is going to be very exciting for your boy. I'm hearing yeah. some fucking calls, so uh, please. Yeah, I tried to pick out the best ones, but let's go. Hi, Sebastian and Robbie. This is Lindsay. I love the show, and I'm calling in with a little Valentine's Day thing. Okay, so years ago, I was out for dinner with a boyfriend I'd been seeing for like eight or nine months. This is a few weeks before Valentine's Day. And he said that he didn't want to do anything for Valentine's Day because it was like a big capitalist holiday invented to sell flowers and chocolate. Uh, we broke up very shortly after. But Good. I have girlfriends who deal with the same thing with long-term partners, and it makes them really sad every year. And that makes me so sad, and I don't understand why Valentine's Day can't just be an excuse to do nice things for people that you care about. I don't know. This seems like some fairly prevalent, like, edgelordy bullshit. And I'm curious <laughs> what you guys think about it. Okay, bye. I have a lot of thoughts about this. Do you want Lin to first? First off, let's just say, Lindsay, beautiful call in. Thank you beautiful. so much for calling in. I'm so sorry this happened to you, okay? This is some bullshit. Robbie, get to your thoughts, okay? Go ahead. I think that 
if you choose Valentine's Day as the entry point of where you're going to opt out of capitalism, then you're just a scumbag. You're just a scumbag. I you're, totally there agree. Are so many things that we are. If you you better not have an iPhone. You better. No. There's so much of you. If the one thing that's like affection and you have to do something for the person you care about and you're like, no, that's where that's where capitalism has gone too far. Then you're just an asshole. Yo, even Tarzan got a Valentine's Day gift for Jane. You know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> like, like, this ain't some capitalist shit, bro. I'm sure this dude is is fucking buying PS5s on resale. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah exactly. This is some lamest excuse for you being a fucking loser. You better live. Yeah, you better live in a, a box if you're not doing this. Like, you know what? You know what I don't like about this kid? You know, right off the bat, I'm on Lindsay's side for this. Uh, through, through, yes, through, definitely. Through. Um, I, I, what I don't like about this kid, he never knew what it felt like to give somebody love and how good that feels. Yes. Right? So, like, like Valentine's Day, treat, making someone feel, like, fancy and all nice, that feels good to see them smile, to see them happy, to make them feel special. This is all beautiful stuff. You know why? Because at the end of the rainbow, there's a pot of gold, and that pot of gold's a BJ, motherfucker. <laughs> I guess. No, I think it's, it is it's at nice. least a good yeah. hookup. At least if you treat them right, you could have one of the most beautiful nights. The Some of my most beautiful nights have been, we've done this, and then we've done that, and I made them feel special. We had drinks at this spot. Then we go home, ba -ba boom, bada, bing, right? Yes, it's a nice way to plan out a good date. I mean, I don't know if he's planning out like, what does he not like dates? Capitalism. He doesn't like, I don't, that's well, just a, were, a shitty excuse for to try to sound like you're on the right side of something where you just don't want to go on a spend extra money to go on a date. You know, what's confusing me. They, she said that they were out to dinner when he brought this up. So he doesn't. He, capitalism is OK. Oh, yeah, it's OK on the 12th. But the yeah. 14th, ding yeah, yeah. dong, dong, dong. <laughs> The yeah. capitalism, the capitalism fairy comes. Yeah. yeah exactly. What the fuck is this shit? Yeah. Which I get. Some people don't like Valentine's Day. They don't like to do gifts or they try to it, whatever you make it how you make it. But if one person in the relationship wants to go out to dinner, what, you, you got to go. Out to, it is what it is, bro. This is what you look. I I used to love walking around New York City as a single guy on Valentine's Day and not having to spend the extra money to go out to dinner the whole nine yards be like, oh, it's nice that I don't have to deal with this. But that's just part of playing ball. If you're in a relationship, you have to come up with a nice plan on Valentine's you, Day. Yes. If you don't want... You shouldn't be with the person that you don't want to go out to dinner with. I'm just throwing that yeah. out there. If you don't want to go out to <laughs> dinner with the person, what do you think a life together is? Yeah. Okay? Two... Relationships are about compromise. Yeah. They're about compromise. You think when I was with the girls, I was like, yeah, I'm dying to watch fucking Love Island. You think yeah. I'm dying to watch fucking the Real Housewives of Orange County? No, not really. But we, I did that because I knew it meant something to them. Yeah. You should, I, this, this person should throw it back in their face. Oh, I don't think we should do, watch the yes. Super Bowl because of capitalism. Oh, I don't yes. think every time he. Oh no, I think you need to get rid of all your video games 100%. because I just think it's too capitalist. Yes. <laughs> like you can start. If you want to play this capitalism game? You could start. Uh, look, it play has. It it's, hard. Yeah, bring you gotta it right go back. in. You 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 gotta be like be like. Sorry, I would text you, but my phone capitalism. Listen, sorry about yeah, that. I don't you know? want to use capitalism after eleven p.m. Oh, when I'm, I'm so at the club with my friends. Yes, because you look corny as fuck saying that yeah. Valentine's Day is a capitalist fucking holiday. Yeah, you can't. Which it is, but it's just you. That, it is. That can't be your first line of of activism against capitalism. It is. It, not, it shouldn't even be your 20th. So honestly, the $80 you're spending on some bullshit prefix is not fucking affecting the economy at all. OK, yeah. you're buying fucking Reese's the hearts. They have six dollars, a dollar fucking uh, a dollar fucking heart. You're not changing the world. No, you're not changing the world. Just buy the fucking girl what she wants. Or at minimum, hey, this douchebag better wrote a letter. <laughs> a handwritten letter, a handwritten letter. Would you used at to do minimum. That? What's up? Would you used to do that? Yes, me too. Beautiful. See, let's is, move this on. Is the <laughs> let's move on. I was a big handwritten letter guy. All right. We got but I also did the other side too. Move on. Move on. We please. Got, let's we got another call. This calls this is a treat.
Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, got a funny, funny date story to tell and share with you guys. Um, so my story is about a coworker of mine. Now, mind you, I am an elementary school teacher. I teach fifth grade, um, and my nice. coworkers. A lot of people have a you know conception that uh, elementary school teachers are so innocent, um, but this story is quite, quite the opposite. So I was uh, texting with a coworker of mine, um, and you know, we were getting a little flirty, and we decided to go on a date. And on our first date, I quickly realized that there was nothing there. She was a little flat um, in her personality, and it was just like wasn't really – I wasn't vibing with it very well. Um, but we ended up, you know, making out or whatever. And as soon as we made out, I knew it was a bad decision. She was one of the people that makes out with, like, her mouth open the whole time. Oh. Um, so just, like, constant tongue fighting, oh. honestly, that's how it feels. Um, so I was like, yeah, this probably isn't for me. So I – um, you know, I explained to her that I wasn't really interested, and we kind of moved on. And she she had said that she was down to, like, kind of be, like, friends with benefits, but um, I was pretty much of the mindset that this was not going to really happen anymore. So that happened in, like, October, and then we fast forward to Christmas Eve, and I had had a few beers with my friends. We were playing video games together. Um, I know. I live a pretty sad life. But uh, <laughs> um, we're playing Xbox. It's, like, probably, like, 1.30 in the morning, and I get a Snapchat from her, and she's like, I just want to be naughty this year for Christmas. And I'm like, okay, like now I'm drunk. So obviously I'm going to, uh, that's, this is an exciting text to get at one thirty in the morning when you're playing Xbox. Um, so I respond to her. I'm like, well, well how yes. naughty, what, what kind of naughty are we talking about here? And she's like, whatever you want, naughty. So I, uh, me being me, I decide to reply to that by saying, ain't along Christmas, naughty. <laughs> and, uh, that's exactly what she's done for. So <laughs> Christmas comes around the next day, and that night after you know we had both done our you know our, our oh Christmas celebrations God. with our respective families, um, oh. I drove on over there, stopped at CVS on the way, picked up some condoms and some lube, told her to put something sexy on for me, got to her her apartment, and um, yeah, we uh, <laughs> did anal on Christmas. It was a, a pretty wild ride. Uh, three condoms wow. and no come later. Uh, I was in and out, well, in and out with some mess, uh, in about, in about an hour and 10 minutes. It was, uh, quite an experience, uh, unlike any other I'd ever had before. So I hope you guys enjoy this, uh, story or whatever about, it certainly wasn't love, but it was, it was something. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs> oh. Uh. So fucking funny. That's something. That's something right there. It wasn't love, but it's something. <laughs> it was something. Wow. What a call. You know what? Jesus Jesus died for our sins, so we might as well send motherfucker up. <laughs> Anal on we Christmas might... naughty, baby. Wow. How Anal naughty on... are you? Anal on Christmas naughty. <laughs> I heard his dick was the one getting cold that year. <laughs> wow. This is wild. And you know what? It says a lot about him that he has all the options in the world, and that's his swing that he's going to take. What? <laughs> Anal on Christmas naughty? A Anal on Christmas naughty, right? He has all the <laughs> swings in the world. I have a problem with this. Okay. I, have a, I love have this call. a problem call. with what? One, I don't. Anal, no, thank you. Right? Oh, really? No, thank you. Yeah, wait. You, you're, you're on board? No, I mean, no. All right, so what do you mean, really? <laughs> okay, I'm just not uh and I have a especially have a problem, anal on Christmas. Anal on Christmas, okay. Because Christmas is a day of food for me. It's one of the yeah. biggest <laughs> meals of the year. I don't really like Thanksgiving, so Christmas is probably my biggest meal of the year. A hundred percent, Christmas is my biggest meal of the year, and the students request an anal after the biggest <laughs> meal of the year. Naughty baby, anal on Christmas, naughty in every this, sense of the word. This guy's trying to walk the opposite way through the Holland Tunnel during fucking rush hour. Okay, <laughs> there's a traffic jam. Okay, it's the Macy's Day Parade. This ain't the day to take your bike ride going up Fifth Avenue. Okay, <laughs> this is the opposite of what you should be doing. You should, well, you said, should... Three condoms, no come, and a mess later. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, honestly, this was as naughty as it could get. This was <laughs> naughty. This was wrong. No this was naughty. Have anal. You're right. Can we open the schools up so that the fucking teachers can get back to work? 
<laughs> Look the what they do. Teachers are working hard. I have to no. Say. I know. I know. The I only teachers are to. doing God's work in this time. But of that course. is so funny. Also, That's... elementary school teachers getting. Of course, ain't a lot Christmas naughty. T- this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. No girl that I know that t- went into uh, education uh, that I-, I I went to college with was uh um how do I say uh uh prude. <laughs> How would I say uh, uh, a this Virgin sexually... Mary? You know. <laughs> okay, so there you're saying there's a promiscuous. You saw more people that were promiscuous pers- yes. to lower level, uh, like younger children education, early childhood education, which is early sad. childhood education. I actually feel very uncomfortable now because that's what my mother does. Nice. I actually feel very. <laughs> you don't want to know if she's ate on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> she's not i do she's think not. this is the peak the, of naughtiness I the think. amount of gaza deal cookies in my mom's there's no <laughs> anal on christmas in this house. i'll tell you what we got a porta potty at this house for christmas yeah. okay there's no anal okay <laughs> there's no anal until the fucking christmas tree is out the window okay yeah, i think i think that is peak naughtiness though yeah i think he found the the spectrum of not like even on a normal like what's the naughtiest a person can behave anal on christmas naughty <laughs> yes that is wild uh, that's as bad as you get yeah. i feel guilty jerking off on christmas i know but hey, i feel guilty jer- it happens <laughs> it does it <laughs> it does happen <laughs> right, you want to do the next call <laughs> Yes, please. Hurry up. We got to do calls. <laughs> we must do calls before I get into trouble. Every time right. I'm about to get sad or get into trouble, we do a call. Okay? That was a great call, by the way. Thank you for calling in. Beautiful. Hey, team. Um, saw the uh, Instagram story about Valentine's Day stories. Uh, don't have anything, you know, super crazy, but I will say um, when I first got Twitter, I made a tweet that was, is Valentine's Day one of those drink before noon holidays? It was kind of a joke at the time, but it actually got, like, a lot more love on Twitter than I expected it to. And I honestly meant it because it was a Friday, uh, and I wanted to drink in the afternoon because I was in college, you know. But sure. I got a lot of likes from, you know, people that resented Valentine's Day and um, some comments and shit about how Valentine's, you know, how Valentine's Day makes people think of X, Y, and Z. And I really didn't intend it that way. Um, but all that to say, the consensus is. Valentine's Day is a drink before a noon holiday. All right. Take care. Robbie's hot. Robbie's Great hot. Call. Love it. It's a great call. Phenomenal this so call. Funny. This, I think college is such a bubble that when you contact the outside world about very specific college, yes. they, they confusing message. Yes. I think I wore pajamas on a date once in college. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a different world. Yeah. And he's it's just a- like, oh, it's Friday. I don't have class. Can I drink? I mean, you'll... Literally, there's any excuse to drink before noon on a Friday in college. You'll find it. Yes, a hundred, a hundred percent. I will say this: I think it is a drink before noon holiday. You do, no matter what. I think that actually, actually, it's a very drinkable before noon holiday, right? <laughs> Even so, if you're or, single in a relationship or both, both, bro. Okay, both. One. You got to foresee this as being bad advice. <laughs> Just so everybody Let's be knows. honest. Everyone knows I only give fire advice when it comes to this sort of stuff. Okay. Make sure uh, that both people are, in, if you're in a relationship, both people are on board. Don't just be like, no, this podcast that I listened to told me you should be drinking before noon to show up to this <laughs> date. Yeah. Waste no, it. no. You could use me as a source. You could yeah. use me as a source. Send them my way. Okay. Single, you probably feel bad or you want to get fucking a little fun, you know? Yeah. Today that everyone's shoving in your face like like, oh, look, it's love. Love. Do you have love? Do you have love? And if you don't have love, it feels bad. It's a no, I think it so this is, is a great a, drinking holiday, but it's yes. a phenomenal night. Not this year. Normally to go out in New York City to just not Valentine's Day bars, go into places have where a good time. Sa- there are plenty of single people out. I've had a lot of fun out in New York on Valentine's Day. It's one of my favorite holidays it's to be in New York City. It's an easy make out holiday. It's, it's easy very fun. Make out. And people it's are a- just more, you have a conversation starter. People are like down to talk. It's very fun. People are because out. You know they're single if they're out. You know, and they also, they know they're single. 
A lot yeah. of days, <laughs> these people be walking that, around. Yeah. They be exactly. pretending that they're not single. Yeah, like, that's a I'll better tell you this, point. They there's these single. girls and there's these dudes that walking around town and they're not recognizing the fact that nobody yeah. loves them. On yeah. Valentine's Day, they're very aware that they're yeah. single and they're like, yeah. I'm going to hit the bar. Maybe we need more Valentine's Day out Yeah, there, okay? I think it'd be a quarterly <laughs> Valentine's Day just to know where you stand with all the people you're talking to. Just like love is a business. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we might as well do a quarterly <laughs> review yeah. just because some of these dudes, six foot five, walking around like they got the world by the balls. I know. You know what I mean? Remind yeah. yourself, nobody loves your ass. <laughs> I thought That's you meant not- they are, I thought you were gonna go a different way. But yeah, I agree. No. Valentine's Day, you know where you stand. And if yes. you're out and single, everybody kind of knows where it's a very fun day to drink and go out. I think I've gone out every year that I've been in New York City on Valentine's Day. What a flex. Right and <laughs> so the second and I, I did I'm, post this week that I was I'm like, oh, I'm alone on Valentine's Day, whatever. And man, people were like, Oh, are you all right? You look so sad. I'm like, I didn't mean it as alone like without a partner i meant it i'm just gonna be physically alone this are year are you are you my valentine maybe i guess i mean i'm gonna talk do you to you hear on this valentine's shit? day do you hear this shit i deal with everyone out here do you, maybe i guess you'll know, you know what valentine's this is the toxic day. bullshit know. That i'll know on valentine's <laughs> this is the toxic bullshit we're talking about clearly the hotter one always gets to say whether you're the valentine or not you know what i mean no anyways i think that if you're in a relationship it's a drinking holiday too Definitely together, maybe not before noon. I hey, say maybe you wake up, you live together, you make breakfast and a glass of champagne in the morning. Beautiful. Oh, they're excited for the night all night long. Yeah, they're excited for the evening. I, I but I also like special touches like that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, um, I can tell. I oh yeah baby uh like I think <laughs> that that like putting out Christmas morning you put out a little special plates Valentine's Day you get like a little special you wake them up and, and I I would give like a like a little Reese's in the morning I go yeah, yeah you know nice. this, like, you're like, a showman this is some showmanship you I'm have a with the whole day I ra- yeah I run a freak show and that freak show is my love okay yeah. <laughs> And I'm pulling out all the fucking studs. We got the bearded lady and we got the fucking. Well, I shouldn't say this. No, it's mine. I shouldn't say this. No, no. ladies, be, ladies with beards. That's beautiful, too. I don't know. What, what no, do you want there's me to nothing say? wrong with bearded lady. Please save me. Robbie, please save me. I was about to get into trouble here. OK, <laughs> I'm talking bearded ladies. Please, as we go on, this is why we're not doing a Valentine's Day episode alone, because I'm like, I need help. And this is the hotties helping me save myself because I'm either going to be emotional or get my ass into trouble. OK, go ahead, Robbie. All we right. got another call. Of course, we got a ton. The next one is going to be a little bit long. Okay. Each call can only go up to three minutes, so there's technically two calls, and there's three stories inside this call. I'll pause it after every story. Great, three stories. You know what? Today, it's the most that you've ever felt like a like a producer to me. This is I like. I this. know. I like this. I like this feeling. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, hi, my name's Allie, and I figured with Valentine's Day coming up, I would share. Um, some <laughs> of my ridiculous dating encounters that I've had in my past when I was younger and a teenager. So I think the best one is the time that I was at my house with this guy uh, that I was talking to at the time, and it had somehow completely slipped my mind that I had a date that night with another guy. I don't know if I just wasn't taking it seriously or if I was kind of planning on blowing it off, but um, and it also slipped my mind that this guy was going to come pick me up and take me on that date. So guy number two that I'm supposed to go on the date with shows up to my house while guy number one is at my house and then waits and watches guy number one leave my house and then I come out and proceed to get in the car with guy number two and go on this Epic. date. So obviously, was off to a really great start. Um, from what I remember, the guy was really like chill about it because it was just like a first date. So it was like, what are you gonna do, right? Um, it was not a good date from what I remember. I'm pretty sure I was like high as shit. Like I had smoked a ton of weed, having forgotten about the date, and I was just not. <laughs> there for the date like I didn't really care about what the guy had to say like if we were not really hitting it off 
and we went to a local Fridays, and it just so happened that one of my best friends was also at the Fridays, completely unplanned, and she was, like, two tables away from me, so we spent the whole time basically, like, blowing straw wrappers at each other and, like, mouthing words to each other and just generally being obnoxious, so I feel really bad for that poor guy, but... You know, it, it is what it is, and it makes for a funny story. Okay, so that's how anyone that starts the call like that, you know, not even hey, okay, so <laughs> yeah. I'm on board. They're my yeah. type of person right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, let's cut no, to the shade. That is how you talk on the phone. <laughs> either I say, what's up, Playboy, or I yeah. <laughs> jump right into, yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't say hi. I think hi is a waste of time. Yeah. If you're picking up a call, we already know hello. Hello is implied. Let's just, okay, so here's what's going on, right? I cut right to the chase. This is beautiful. This is phenomenal because a lot of men fuck up dates most of the time. Yeah, I think this is, yeah, she's she's in control in this situation. She's in the driver's seat fully, and it's nice to see somebody who's just like, yeah, I don't really give a fuck about this. I'm high as shit. I love We're this. going to the local fraud. Like I love, yes. Yeah, I funny. love this. You because sometimes dudes do this all the time. You, yes. you were like, I used to have a routine, and you would have you said that in the past. But she's yeah. like, she this is not. She t- she upped you up. No, I've gone up bad for. I remember one time I drank a tall boy in a Dunkin' cup on the way as after I ate an edible. Yeah. Okay, so we've exactly. all we've all made mistakes. Okay, <laughs> I'm drinking a tall boy in a Dunkin' cold brew cup. Okay, yeah. so we've all lived. Oh, in the cup. In the t- I poured the tall boy into the cup so I could walk on the street with it. Yeah. Right. So we've all lived a life. All right. Anyways. Yeah. Of course. But this no, is yeah, wonderful. how you prepare for a date is not my nobody's business. I think. I this is think great. I think that going on maybe one date where you just fucking boss out like this yeah. might help you find love sooner. Yes. Because it probably takes the stakes away from the other dates. And also, I think sometimes dudes are attracted to that. A hundred percent. A hundred. You don't even know what you did. That dude probably still thinks about I you. I think it's you my, know what probably. I mean? Yeah. I think I it's not up. a bad idea to be like, yeah, my bad. I had another day or like the guy might be like, uh, it's either going to turn him off or tar- it's like I I 100 percent. Although some dudes this. are really in their feelings and would get mad because they have insane egos. But that's good. You're weeding these kind of people out. You're weeding them out. But then- that is a good move because the guy was chill. Then it means he's probably a little bit more understanding. You can't you can't act like this and then expect date number two to be phenomenal. <laughs> probably not. Date number two is Dave and Buster's, and we're each getting our own fucking power cards. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you in a That's half not hour. terrible, but yeah. No, actually, that date sounds phenomenal. Yeah. I don't think I want a date. I think I want a, a, a friend from fucking ten, when I was 10 years old just hang out with again. You know what I mean? This call, her call continues. So. Okay, continue. And I guess the other funny story I have is in high school, I dated a guy who was a different race than I was, and his parents' standards, like, absolutely not. No way was it allowed to be happening. And I was at his house one day with my best friend, and I guess his parents were gone. Maybe it was, like, a holiday or something. They were at work, and we had off of school. And surprise, his (laughs) parents, his dad, his mom, I don't remember who, came home. And my best friend and I had to hide in... She hid in his, like, washing machine or his dryer, one of them, and I was, like, in the closet, like, in the laundry room, hiding, like, fearing for our lives. But basically, his parents came home, and we were hiding, like, in fear of our lives, and we had to, like, wait for God knows how long hiding uh, until his parents left. And I wish I could say that it was, like, a one-off thing, but it definitely happened, like, on multiple occasions. Um, it, it was not a good time. It's hysterical looking back on it, but at the time it was like absolutely terrifying. I mean, have you ever been hooking up with someone and had to leave? Do you play with fire like that? You mean had to like run out the house because the parents? Yeah, or yeah, or yeah. Nah, bro. I wore enough In cologne that they would have known I was there. You know yeah. what I mean, bro? <laughs> Sebastian came in a room, and my I think I left three ghosts of sense behind. You know what I'm saying, bro? (laughs) Of course I'm going to a girl's house in high school? Yeah. 
<laughs> there was no, there is no shot. Abercrombie Fierce was dripping. It was that was the original drip. I, I don't think I ever either was in no. that like, situation. Like I wasn't a risk taker like that. I wasn't a risk taker like that at all. I, everyone, it was always above board. I don't but. even know how I would. <laughs> What a spot. No. Like this poor kid. This kid went in. He was trying to bust a load and he became a load. Okay. <laughs> he's in a the dryer. Dry. He's a dryer. And he's the dude became the load when yeah. he's just trying to bust the load. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's have the terrible. tables have turned. Maybe you should have listened <laughs> to your parents. Okay. We're going to do on extra soils because we're, we're fucking washing your mind, Playboy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's finish. <laughs> Please. I suppose my third and final good story I have is the one and only time I have ever been actually serenaded with a guitar by a man uh, was this guy I was talking to also in high school. And we had like a very weird kind of talking phase. Like it was, I don't know, you couldn't, we didn't, I didn't really know what was going on with it. Like he was not a good communicator of feelings and we were not, like, official. It was nothing serious or legitimate. And something happened one night where we were with a bunch of friends at his house. And, like, uh, one of my exes got brought up or, like, something happened. And we were just casually talking about it. And, like, I don't know, he lost his pool and started screaming at me to, like, get out of his house, like, at the top of his lungs, like, screaming. And so I left and I was like, fuck that. And as I'm driving home, it's like 10 o'clock at night, I get a call from him and he's like, wait, just turn the car around. And I was like, fuck you, I'm not turning the car around, like I'm going home. And he was like, no, please, just turn the car around. And for some reason, I was like, sure, I'll go turn the car around. And I get sure. back to his house and this man pulls out a guitar. I'm like Ooh. sitting on the hood of my car and he starts playing the guitar and singing I want to say it was The Time of Your Life by Green Day. Oh like, and I have never experienced a more uncomfortable two and a half minutes. And it has nothing to do with, the, like, he was a nice guy. The singing, the guitar was fine. But, like, it is very awkward, in my opinion, to just sit there while someone sings and plays guitar to you after they just have been screaming at you to get out of their house. So I think he kissed me that night. And I think I went home. And I was like, that's the weirdest fucking thing that I have ever dealt with so um needless to say that that didn't go anywhere but yeah i mean <laughs> maybe someone will get some enjoyment out of these stories because i look back on them and i think they're pretty fucking ridiculous but there you go and a happy valentine's day to everyone hopefully not dealing with crazy ridiculous dating stories like this oh. <laughs> i mean uh, epic is... high school career. This <laughs> this high girl school career. Is this right. girl deserves trophies. I, 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 <laughs> you, you are a queen. You are our queen. This is so beautiful. Epic high school career. This is phenomenal. I mean, wild. Scr wild. I mean, I'm surprised she went back. Of, she was you know what? She seems like she likes a good time. She's like, yeah, I'll see she has this fun. This is, yeah, this it was just be scream, funny. screaming at me. I'm gonna go. High school's confusing though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that is. High school's confusing, and boys don't know how to express their emotions. And I'm not making excuses because I was never, I never screamed. No. Right? Yeah. So, but like, but like, this dude sounds like a fucking problem. You shouldn't have turned around. But, but hey, it might have been worth it. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Something You'll unpredictable, never unpredictable, but in the end, end, it's right. Wait, wait, I that's also not the time of your that's life. That's an insane. Wait, wait, I didn't even <laughs> think of that. That is a truly insane song to, uh -huh. to somebody after you just screamed at them. It's not even like I'm sorry. It's like I know you had the time of your life when I just screamed at you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was unpredictable. <laughs> What? But in the end, you came, you turned around, and now I sing a song. Yeah. <laughs> this is oh phenomenal. My, that's terrible. I mean, hey. I also agree. I mean, you, we clearly differ on this. Also, I don't sing. I can't sing well. So I'm never going to serenade someone. But it feels like it could be awkward. You have experience in this. Do you want to elaborate? I do have experience in this. And I will say. For all the times it's awkward, the times that it works is probably 10 times better. You know really? what I mean? <laughs> when has it worked? 
It's never worked. Middle school really. dances. I guess it works for my uh, my aunt and my mom like it when I play yeah. at Christmas time. That's I guess nice. it's That's never worked. Like, than a serenading. No, I, I no, I don't think when I, there are stakes. Have you ever serenade, serenaded with stakes other than going to a dance? Um, like you did something wrong and you need the serenade to come through for you. No, no, I I'm funny when I'm in trouble. I'm funny. That's your way to get out of it. And I'm very funny when I'm in trouble. You think I'm oh, funny really? now? <laughs> I'll tell you the fun, the funniest I ever will be. The uh, ever will be. I'm in a suit. It's a little too tight for me. I'm sweating, and uh, the girl I'm with is mad at me. That's the funniest, funniest I'll ever, ever be. be. <laughs> That's peak funny. I can see it. I can this see is, that. You have no idea. I, I've been told by girls I've been dating. They literally say, back against the wall, I'm <laughs> fighting out with personality, okay? Yeah. Suit, can't button, but we leave it open because that's what they said on fucking Queer Eye, that that's the look, okay? Nice. <laughs> Fucking sweating, dripping balls. Fucking keep pushing my hair up, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. A little. I got too drunk and I made a joke about uh, about a girl about and then my the, the girl's mad at me or something like that. You, yeah, okay. Phenomenal. You That's missed on a joke. That's when the a material comes out. No, I land on a joke, but I, it's a joke at someone's expense. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then uh, whoever that person was. Oof, I've never been funny. I've I, I will be dropping bombs. I, I've been told by. By women, stop making me laugh. I'm angry at you. Really? I've been told that. And you know that's powerful yeah, when they yeah. want to be pissed, <laughs> but you can't. But they're like, la- and they go, oh, I see, stop. I see. And they go, stop. I'm, uh, you, you making me laugh is only getting me angrier, angrier. And then they'll be like, now I'm pissed. Yeah. Now but that's I, your, you, all you know how to do. They're also, they can't be as angry as if you <laughs> saying, uh, American no. idiot, bad. <laughs> no, no. I would imagine I in that scenario. An American idiot. <laughs> I imagine if you started to do that <laughs> when you were getting yelled at at a wedding, uh, that would make them actually furious. No, it would actually be the funniest thing. I go, I would love to stay. I love to have a shot, but I'm here with the old ball and chain. And then they go, shoot me daggers or some shit like that. Yeah. And I just turn to them and I go, I am an American idiot. Are you actually, take the mic? You don't. You take the mic and you do an American idiot at the yes, wedding. Yes, at the wedding for everybody. I was at a wedding where someone uh, uh, I was at a wedding where someone grabbed the mic and they dedicated a song to the bride uh, to the uh, bride and groom. The song that they chose Mambo number five. (laughs) I want Erica, Venetia. (laughs) One, two. It's a song about fucking girls. Okay, let's do another call before I get in trouble. All right, let's go. Hi, uh, I'm calling to get loud about love this week. Um, So it's been a crazy long winter already for so many reasons, but my husband is really showing up in beautiful ways for our family. Uh, When I met him, we were both grad students with super flexible schedules, so he would never be up before like 1130. Even then, it would take him like an hour or so to be functioning, and maybe he would take a nap. I mean, I truly believe that he loves sleep more than he loves me. Um, but lately he's been taking all the 5.30 wake-ups with our two-year-old son, and it is truly the most romantic thing that anyone has ever done because I know how much he really loves sleep. Um, but every day he's been starting my mornings with this totally beautiful act of love. So Ugh. even with all the craziness in the world right now, when I go downstairs and I see these two laughing boys eating cereal, Uh, It's been just such a bright spot in my day. So I wanted to get loud about how wonderful he is and how much I love him. So thanks for listening and happy Valentine's Day. Thanks a lot. I will say this. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. This is a nice moment to really show the range that loud about nothing. (laughs) Listeners, (laughs) we have naughty on Christmas anal to this. Is to, like to, it can't to love be of a two child. different extremes. I tell you, we hit all. We're in all the markets, okay, bro. Oh, I'm not it's lying clearly. when I say this. We yeah. get the, the messages we get yeah. are from everyone. You know what I this mean? This is could not be two totally different stories, but beautiful. Do you want to? This is. What this are your is, thoughts on this? First off, I am such a fucking softy. I hear this stuff and I feel emotional inside. I to just you know what got me caught up, bro. What? When she said, 
Thanks you for calling in. Happy Valentine's Day. When she said, me and my family. Yeah, that is nice. You know what? I never, I guess I never like thought about that. It's like, I don't have a, it's just me. I'm fucking Jack Kerouac out here. You know what I mean? <laughs> On the road. Yeah. And and this person's able to go, me and my family. That's a beautiful sentiment. I actually love that. I've never felt, I guess I'm getting lonely. <laughs> I don't know. I will say this. I don't mean to put a damper on this nice call, but I have okay. some thoughts. Okay. I, have I think a it's nice. To... I think it's, it's nice. nice. It's nice. It's nice. Uh, uh, I will say, though, if you start the bar at anything I do before 11 a.m. is considered romantic, yes. then you're setting yourself up pretty nice. You're like, I love sleep so much that any every minute before 11 a.m. Uh -huh. is intensifies my romance, then you're everything you're 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 doing a good i guess you're setting yourself up to always look good i heard this guy didn't even propose he just woke up at 10 30 to yeah, make it exactly. to the fucking mcdonald's exactly. menu you know what i mean <laughs> he just I'm he just, just got like, at the mcdonald's breakfast one i'm day. sure he's great but in this it's it's being like waking up to to have we have a child that needs this, to be tended to there's other i mean it is well nice. he's doing it he's doing he it. is doing it he he's is doing, doing it, it. But, and it is nice but he did set himself up nice and yes. this is a good lesson for anyone that's like uh, uh, gonna start dating someone you gotta set yourself yeah. up nice <laughs> set the bar low and overachieve 100 <laughs> percent. i'm gonna be telling i'm gonna be telling girls i'll be like you know what i really hate pizza yeah, but exactly. if I love a girl, if I love you, I'll eat pizza with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm just gonna be setting up like love yeah. situations that like, hey, you know, oh, I fucking hate like watching TV and laughing my ass off. But you like it? I love <laughs> you so much. Fine, let's put on Harold and Kumar and get high again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's great, and it sounds like a beautiful family. Oh, it sounds beautiful. He it also sounds is very appreciative, which is nice. That's a great wife. So I hope he knows that. It's nice to be with someone who appreciates the things you do. I'm sure he knows. I'm sure. I'm. Sh I think it would be weird if she was just calling into podcasts, That's true. flexing about her husband. Very true. That is true. And, and not telling him. That's you true. know what I mean? They're they're probably alone all day together. That's so beautiful. It's so nice. Oh, you know what? I I love love. I miss lo I I miss love. All right. Next call. Save me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, the next call is going to be another 180, really showing off our range. Okay. What do we got? Hey, Seb. Um, okay. I have a story about a horrible first date for you. So I was 22. I'm rebounding off a four and a half, five year relationship, not looking for anything except for like hot guys to make me feel hot again. Yes. Um, I'm living in New York. I'm like feeling myself again. So I go on this date with this guy who I think I met on an app. I don't even remember what app it was. Um, and he was older. He was like 30s, 35. Um, Old. and he picked this like cute wine bar near where I lived. And so I was like, oh wow, like nice vibe, you know, knew I was not going to date him. Just wanted to like get my groove back. So I show up first. I'm like just hanging out, kind of waiting for him to get there. He shows up a couple minutes late. Fine. No big deal. And he looks like his picture. So I was like, oh, amazing. Like expectations already met. And he sits down and we're at like one of those high tops. Um, and he immediately gets out a bag of coke and and like i don't even know what it's called like pours a line of coke onto the table and does it <laughs> while he's like introducing himself kind of talking about why he was late mind you i'm not listening to any of that i'm just like shocked wow. in my 22 year old body that a man who is 35 is like pouring coke onto the table of our wine bar first date and i was just so distracted the whole rest of the date i had no idea what he said i think it was really fun it felt like we were like old friends but I just couldn't stop thinking about the Coke. So I just, I knew there was not going to be a second date. I don't think I texted him after. We didn't kiss. That was it. Um, and yeah, that's my horrible first date story. This wow. guy took our advice from the last call and said, <laughs> yeah, this is the bar. I could bring this out Coke at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is up. 
He was honest. He was yeah. showing up. He was authentically him. Yeah. He's late and ripping rails off a ta- public table. Yeah. This and is. She's like, yeah, it felt like we were old friends. Yeah, you start off just doing blow. Of course. Well, he was doing. It didn't sound like. Oh she yeah, did she it. probably did it. You're right. She did. Yeah, she didn't even know the name. This is a phenomenal story. This is. Yeah. A, this is the story for the ages. This you is know a what I mean? New York story. A this is our a- guy shows up, does blow. She's also 22. He's 35. That's a little bit of a it's kind of actually predatory that he just pulled out yes 13 years older he's like oh, i'll just give us a blow yes i don't think he even offered i don't i, I think this guy just wanted someone to talk to i think he's on the apps <laughs> yeah, you might because be right. he's like i got blow i got no friends <laughs> yeah. let me hit, let me go to a wine bar with someone that i could talk to i'll say this the conversation probably phenomenal yeah probably fun it sounded like it sounded like this girl just read the room. It was like, we're, I, all right, we'll just have a nice time and we'll we'll never kiss. We'll never be anything. Yeah, but yeah, he'll just, but he'll I'll make the best out of this. Yeah, 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 he'll pay for my mall backs. Yeah, that's funny. This is awesome. I, I and uh, guys out there. Don't do coke on your first date in front of them. Yeah, go, go sneak to the it in the bathroom. <laughs> please okay. go to the bathroom. Go sneak it in the bathroom like a fucking gentleman. OK, yeah. <laughs> like a gentleman. I mean, go- it's kind of obvious. If you're yes. doing it at all, I mean, if you're t- if you've never been around it, then maybe not. But no, but it's obvious. a lot of people. It's pretty obvious yes. if you're doing it. So it's just a strange move. But I mean, also to start it, like maybe the bar- by bar three, you're like, it's going well. Two, three bars in. Hey, I have a little coke. I don't know. Maybe what if that's your move? What if she was a cop? <laughs> Is he just going on dates, just dropping lines in front of people? I mean, I don't know. He might. He probably would have ran. Yeah. This guy. This guy's a cop in a race. Then she would have been. She would have been a. She would have been a loser. If you're going on a date and you're like, (laughs) I'm gonna arrest you for doing a line of blow, then you're a loser. But I don't think she was that. No. She sounded cool as shit. No. Yes. This girl was awesome. This dude sucked. But you know what? I'm sure that he did a lot. It it works for one woman. I'm sure. I'm sure he busted out a line and the woman was like, okay, I said she, the one, some woman went, this is my husband. She went <laughs> home and wrote in a diary that night. I think I met my husband tonight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. Because some people like that lifestyle. Yes, definitely. Putting cards on the table. I'm actually, I'm actually about this. Okay. Yeah. I guess if that's what you're going to be, but... I never do. I never do coke on a date. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, never. I mean, I don't do dates, but yeah, me neither. Never. All right, let's do the next call. All right, so this is my bad Valentine's Day story. This is Dan calling in with that, by the way. So back Thank like you, my Dan. sophomore year of college, <laughs> uh, there was this one really expensive restaurant on campus. It was the, the place that you went to if you wanted to have a fancy date. You all know the spot. Every college town has its version of this. For us, it was called Cafe Gelato. It was very mediocre, very overpriced food, nice bistro European vibes inside. I decided that that year I was going to splurge and be romantic and uh, bring my then girlfriend to Cafe Gelato for Valentine's Day and, uh, you know, try to impress her a little bit. So I made the reservations. I was on my shit. I made sure that we were going to get a table in this very crowded place. And, you know, we get there, we're all excited, we're happy, we're ready to go. And a tiny, tiny, tiny little menu gets put down in front of us. You know, we're <laughs> looking it over, we're flipping it over, I back mean, and forth. This a million is intro times, to prefix menu. Trying to see, like, is, yes. that, is, that, is there another page? Just, uh, <laughs> just everything. But no, it was a prefix menu with two options. You had, like, you know, two, two options of entrees, two options of uh, appetizers or maybe like five options of appetizers and you pick three or something like that. You know, you had a, a very, very limited set of options to work with. Yeah. They may one of the some food options was yeah. <laughs> some sort of steak or beef. And the other was uh, a surf option to match the turf. So there was a, a lobster on there. Me being the adventurous and uh, wanting to impress 19 year old that I was, I decided to go with the surf option because that felt a little bit fancier to me, you know. Who doesn't want lobster tails? The romantic, supple food. You know, everyone always talks about how good they are. I don't think that they're an aphrodisiac, but, you know, they are. They are one of those foods, you know. Yeah. One of those romantic, <laughs> indulgent foods. So, I, you know, I get, I get the lobster. 
nice, we get nice. it. Food comes out. Looks very impressive. And uh, it's really take us to the whole thing. Took me. I have no idea how to you know, eat a lobster. No sense of uh, <laughs> an idea oh, of how to no. approach it. I don't know if I should <laughs> crack the shell with my hands. If I'm supposed to just like scoop the guts out. Oh if I'm, no! If I just gnaw into it, and you know, if I get a little shell, it's fine. I have no idea what I'm working with here, no idea how to do it at all. I uh, at one point got up and went to the bathroom and Googled how to <laughs> eat a lobster, um, and I did not come up with anything that was useful. So you know, I had to just sit there and and, and live with. That's it. It got cut off. But I mean, wow. <laughs> Lot, a lot going on there. Yeah, this have kid you, was... you, you, you went to college in the city, so you didn't. Did you have this? No, right? Nah, I was also doing drugs, bro. Prefix yeah. dinners didn't were not happening. But did you doing... ever? Do you remember the time where you first learned what a prefix? Did that ever happen? I remember I went on a Valentine's. This similar story happened to me where I went to Valentine's Day. I'm thinking we're like to a fancy place. I'm thinking I could pick whatever on the menu. It's extra expensive, and then you could yeah. only do prefix. Yeah, no, uh, no, I knew about prefix because um, uh, uh, bat mitzvahs and stuff like that. And so, no, you know, I, like, no, I've known from like, yeah, sweet 16s and shit, but I didn't realize that restaurants that I had maybe been to outside of Valentine's Day on Valentine's Day only do this. Oh, I knew so you're like, that. oh, I like X, Y, Z from this yeah, place. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you go yeah. there and they're not serving it. You're just a hundred percent. Oh, fuck. And now you're already on the hook for so much money. And a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, that sucks. And also, to, for, <laughs> to <laughs> this guy was a, he was not ready for this. OK, no, he was not ready for this. four times. <laughs> He was like Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Hundred percent. He had no. He had. People there was no defense. All angles. Yeah. There was no cultural defense that was protecting yeah. him. Okay. Yeah, exactly. There was no no history of him going away. He walked in and and the guy the maitre d. He goes, wait, you're a waiter, but you're in the front. What's yeah, happening? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. He was thrown by everything. This is great. He, yeah, know. he fucking goes in the bathroom. So the guy's giving out mints. He goes, get out of here. Get out of here, you fucking pervert. Hanging out in the bathroom like a fucking <laughs> loser, like you it. pervert. He's fucking freaking yeah. out. He sprays that him with cologne. Like the, the tone of for this call, that sounds like what he would say. Hey, please get out of here. No, I'm not going to okay. do an impression. <laughs> right? No, I think that He's a good also, man. I know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I have eaten lobster before. But I think with my Flex. parents present, like, I don't think I would I would know either. Now that I think about it, how like. I guess yeah. my dad always told me what to do. A hundred percent. Here, you take this piece, you open this and then you could like, I don't know which parts are edible, which parts are. I can't, it wouldn't be worth it, I don't think, for me to order lobster. When I was sitting here, I go, how, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure even today I didn't know how to eat a, a lobster. I, know, I don't know if I do either. I don't think I, I don't think I could confidently go into a situation eating a lobster yeah no wow i think i would be like 60 percent correct and also you're the whole point is the flex and then it gets the whole there point and you, is the flex you can't even complete the flex the, it's like renting a fucking lambo when you're 16 you can't even yeah, drive you know exactly. what i mean <laughs> this is no good this and but you know what it's really cute this was really cute and i'm sure it prepared him for future events Yes. I'm going to prefix menus and fucking definitely because this kid does not sound like he stopped there. If he's doing this at 19, I'm yeah. sure he's been to <laughs> many a prefix menu. It sounds like he's a really nice man. Yeah. He sounds like a really sweet man. Yes. And I'm sure at 19, you're taking your girls to the fancy restaurant. She must have just been so thrilled. She she probably told all her friends. Yeah. She, oh, definitely. If it's the spot on campus, too. Oh, for Valentine's Day, we're going to the spot. Oh, That's we're going nice. to do, do that, right? We're going yes. to Dante's Den. Oh, yes. my God. You're going to the Den. Dante's on Den. <laughs> you're going to the Den on Valentine's <laughs> Day? Like, that sounds like the sister strip club to Bada Bing. <laughs> Dante's <laughs> Den. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but it's, it's like that thing. It's like this man's trying to be nice. He's just not ready. He didn't. Yeah, he, he was bit ready off a little be... more than he could chew. But fuck it. I'm sure it's it charming. memorable. I can I say this? It's charming. Yes, it's charming to not know stuff. Can we can we normalize not knowing things? Yeah, <laughs> it's ben. charming to not know things. Yes. All right, let's do the next call. Yeah, we got a lot of sweet listeners. I actually love this. We have such beautiful listeners. Hotties are beautiful. 
Yeah, well, maybe we spoke a little too soon, but <laughs> <laughs> let's see what happens. Hey, Seb. Hey, Rob. Today is Valentine's Day coming up, and I've been uh, trying to date, kind of. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, as I'm getting older, I try to be sort of more honest. Trying is the operative word. Uh, you know, if, I, so if, I'm, if I'm seeing someone and I really don't see this is going good. anywhere, I try to kind of snip it earlier so no one's feelings get hurt, especially That's if I think are. that they're starting this to catch good. feelings that I don't. In any case. In any uh, case. Wound up <laughs> nah, having this my conversation uh, with a girl I went on a couple of dates with. And, you know, I said this. Basically sent it. It's not you. It's me. Text of I'm not looking to uh, date right now. And she said, "Oh well, I'd be interested in exploring something casual." Should I show up? You know, that's good. I, that's exactly <laughs> kind of what I said. So, you know, we met up to talk about what boundaries would uh, would make us feel safe, would make us feel comfortable uh, with that. And uh, it wasn't a lot of talking that went on, basically. <laughs> and nice. uh, towards the end, she's also uh, of a different nationality, so she has a bit of an accent. Uh, but I could tell she was uh, not so casual about it. I could kind of just see and hear based on things she was saying. And so I kind of just restated how I felt. Uh, to which she responded, well, maybe I just fuck you till you love me. <laughs> and I really just didn't know how to, how to react to that. Uh, so I laughed at her uh, and, and sort of brushed past it. But uh, I thought it was a very interesting exchange, to say the least. Uh, but, but, yeah, I figured I'd call in and fucking see if you guys want to deal with that. <laughs> All right. Wow! Classic land call. Classic this loud is about now we're back, baby. This is this is so, sometimes sometimes there's some loud about nothing fans that go, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> this dude makes a little sense. Wow! Fuck what a Russian accent he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does. Maybe I'll fucking... just have to fuck you until you love me. <laughs> wow! Has anyone ever said that's hot? I would. That's hot. <laughs> that is hot. That's. Back against the wall. That's a hot thing to say. That's hot. I don't think that you're gonna get, gonna get, have better sex than someone that's gonna fuck you till they till love, you, love till, yeah. till you, you love them. Yeah, I like how we go. I mean, this was an honest call. He's going through. He basically took us through. I'm trying to be a good person. Yes, trying the operative word, and because it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It is hard and, to be fully. There's a lot going up. on. Yeah, yes, I guess this is very honest. This is very honest. And you know what? She was very honest, too. Yeah, <laughs> she was very honest. then too. fuck you. You know what? I would have said I would have said. What would you have said? Let's see if you can. Let's see. If you can. <laughs> you might as well, I don't know. You might as well. Maybe be like, at least once. Yeah. I mean, in the future, like, that's a that's a not a tox. That's a definitely because, you know, they their their end goal is love. And if you're already like, I don't really see this going anywhere. You're so right tough to to be like, but it is an intriguing. That is one of the most intriguing ways to, <laughs> to have it continue. Yes. Let's see if you can't. And hey, I, at least you got to try once <laughs> that a man is never saying that to a woman. Yeah, that's only something no, a woman can not, say to a man. <laughs> that's guys only a, don't fuck that good. That's why. <laughs> no, guys don't fuck that good. If you, there's yeah, you, I don't think there's many guys out there that are that confident in their fuck game. <laughs> no, they have confident. They make a lot of money or they uh -huh. do whatever. They'll pull out blow on the first date. But I don't think they're going to be like, I could fuck you until you love me. Yes, I think they'll be like, I could provide for you. I people like me. I'm funny, or I'm this, or I'm you that. Know I have a good job. I'm smart, but they're they're not go to move is I'll fuck you till you love me. I bet you that this woman's not even good at sex. Maybe I I'm bet sure, you she's not I'm even. I'm sure good I'll at call sex. back and tell us if she's not. <laughs> please, please, please. You have to tell us right? why. What was... makes you say this? That's intriguing. I think, I think because. 
this is this is I don't know. This is not fun. But I think that her heart isn't her heart is the the fucking's coming from our hearts. And when you're trying to fuck from the hearts, you need both of you fucking from the heart, not from the, the, the junk. You know what I mean? I see what you mean. This is true. That is the best sex, too. Usually I would fucking imagine. from the hearts. If both people, ah, maybe not. Maybe just for me. <laughs> no, for me, <laughs> when too. When you bro. actually love the person and like you care oh. about the person, it's a nicer experience. You look, you lock in eyes. I hooked up yeah. with this one girl Although, once. And uh, actually, let's, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I, I hooked up with this one girl once and, and I, I liked her a lot. And we like hooked up a bunch and we hooked up and we were looking at each other in her eyes. And she's like, I never looked at someone in their eyes before. She's like, that was awesome. I go, yeah, that was really awesome. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> we That's need the to next cut way that. to describe we need to sex. Cut that. We need to cut awesome. That. We need yeah, to cut you know, I'm Sebastian Canelli, and my sex is awesome. <laughs> no, it's actually no. Please, 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 can we do a call? Please, can we all do right, a call? Right, please, right. I hate this. Hi, I'm calling about one of the worst first dates, if not the worst first date I ever had, but I've ever heard of. Um. I ran into a friend from high school who was a cop or is a cop um, and he asked me out. So I was like, yeah, sure. You know, and um, I met him at a Chinese food, like a basement Chinese food restaurant kind of by city hall. And I'm all for like best food, low atmosphere places, but this place took it to a new level. And he wanted to only order one thing and split it, and it was Kung Pao chicken, no, no lo mein, no, no beef and broccoli, no, no beef and broccoli, patio, <gasps> just Kung Pao chicken. And then midway through the, um, midway through the date, he said, "Oh, this place is cash only, so we can just split it." And so then I wow. was like, "Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have any cash." And um, he said, oh, there's an ATM two blocks down the street. So I oh my went God. to Cold. the ATM, got cash, gave it back, and then he dared to go in for the kiss, and I denied. End of date. I love this because it's shit-talking cops. <laughs> I love this, too. I love this, too. I, I, this is my thing. This Everyone, is a great story. You this is a great story. story one, all the time. Fuck the police. Yeah. F- one phenomenal uh, uh, phenomenal Chinese food order. This person knows what they're doing at Chinese food. Right? Yeah. You get a fucking spread for I the table. I feel like I've been to this place before, too. Or I've been to this place. Them. There's a ton of places yes. like this in Chinatown. You go in the basement. It's like, yeah. Not it can date. be a good date. It could no, be, I think. No, no. Maybe a not spot. a first date. Maybe not a first date. The, the people that are waiting on you are usually rude. They're, they're overcrowded. You're crammed in there. You're, you're soaking your body up with MSG. Yeah, you're feeling but there's disgusting. something romantic about I mean, not a first date. I think it can be. I feel like there's like movies where people do this. They go to like the hole in the wall Chinese spots and it is romantic. But yeah, there's anyways. also move. Yeah, there's also movies about fucking cars that become robots. Okay, Robbie, okay. So we shouldn't use movies as example. All right, I'm just saying I think it can be romantic. I I disagree. I totally disagree. You know what my date was? What? My date would be either drinks or or, or, or sometimes drinks or sometimes we go get uh, uh food and then we go walk on the high line. You like the high line? I like the high line. I like the Harlem. There was grew a bakery. up in the city. There was a bakery. I yeah, but I think that people don't go on dates uh, to the High Line. I've been on a nice date. To... I used to walk the High Line Max girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I, I it's, knew it's a something to do. It, it also knew... is romantic at night, I guess, to some degree. A hundred percent. I knew a bakery. We get a couple fucking uh, uh, treats. I go, oh, this is good here. This is good. I go, well, do you like this? And they go, yeah. Or you go to fucking. Ample Hills right over there. Yeah, Ample Hills right some, over there. Yeah, you get I did, some, I've done this that exact thing. Exact before. thing, bro. <laughs> and then you go on the high line and you yeah. look at the fucking water, bro. Or you look yeah. at you look at the arts and you just walk around and talk. Phenomenal. So fuck your Chinese food dates in a basement. Okay, okay bro. All right, yeah. I'll t- also, the fact that he made her go to the, he didn't have ca- he didn't have enough cash on him. No, he didn't, he didn't want to admit it. And he only had he a made credit her card. go to yeah. He made her go to the ATM. I would have ran to the ATM. Or yeah, maybe he just wasn't into it. it, and he was like, "All right, fuck it." But he he went for the kiss. That's the weirdest part of the story is that because he was it, like you would think. Once you say you're paying for half, and you have to go walk two blocks in order to get the money to pay for it, I think that's it. 
you're the putting only, your cards on the table. No, the piss. only way a girl's paying for half is if I go to the bathroom and she's like, I bought us another drink when you were in the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> that that's what has. To, I, I'm not let, letting that card sneak into the thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm not about that. Yeah. I'm only going on a date if I could pay the whole thing yeah, or I'm yeah, canceling. Yeah. But yeah. this is another moment. I, think I mean, if somebody learning... was really insistent, I'd be like, all right, whatever. I would have. Uh, if they were 100 percent if they're push if if you feel like they like, no, to. I really like to I prefer to pay for half of that. Yes. Right, whatever. That's fine. Yes, a hundred percent. Um also I think what we're learning here is all these bad date moments are coming from people feeling uncomfortable and not willing to speak truth. Yeah. Oh, definitely. A hundred percent. I think a lot that the, of life though. <laughs> that's a lot of life. I think <laughs> that the more that we get uncomfortable, sp- yeah. I think the more that we could speak truth and, and be our vulnerable selves, the better this is going to be. But that's what you get from the fucking NYPD going on a date to Chinese food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Split half. Kiss me, motherfucker. If you don't, we're never talking again. OK. <laughs> All right. Let's go. We got a few more left. Hey, Sebastian and Sebastian's nephew, Ro- <laughs> Robbie. Um, you guys just absolutely crack me up every week. Oh, Thank by you. the way, this is Pamela. Um, you guys crack me up every week. Love the pod. And, um, I am calling in. I don't really have like craziest date stories. I mean, because really this day and age, like everything's crazy. Um, but what I do have is what is a total deal breaker for me. The total deal breaker for me is somebody who's rude to the wait staff. Can't stand it. Everybody deserves to have some respect. And so yes. if the guy is rude to the wait staff, that that's it. It's done. Anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome uh awesome night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was phenomenal. That was nice, yeah. Yeah, this was nice. And I totally agree with this. But I also think I grew up working in restaurants, so there's no way I'm not gonna be nice to the wait staff. Of course. I, I was the wait staff. My tragic flaw <laughs> may be <laughs> that this wouldn't I would never be able to date somebody seriously. I hate but this. I don't I think I would still be like, all right, I'll see if we we'll still hook up. I don't think you are a monster. I would end the night. You like you like mean you. No, no, I don't like it. I can never date somebody Stop. like this at all. I would not Stop. date. And I, I've talked to people who I think are so out of touch with. How many times that did I'm that like, girl send the truffle fries back that one time? <laughs> How many times did she send the truffle fries back? <laughs> truffle fries. <sighs> and then you tried to hook up with it still. I, <laughs> nobody they knows this reference. Rude, bro. It doesn't matter. <laughs> nobody the knows this. <laughs> But I, it, it yeah, that's what matter. I'm being honest. I'm saying I would not necessarily. I'm not dating these people, but I would still potentially make out at the end of the night. Wow, it's no. not a complete deal breaker. You'd be like, all right, this is it. As as soon as they're rude, that's it. You're beautiful person on, sitting on the other side. You'd be like, we're not gonna hook up. We're going. No, I'd hook up. Yes. So <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to come clean. No, I'd hook be, up. But I could never be with that person. I know. Me, Actually, yeah, I probably no. would make out. I wouldn't like go all the way at yeah. all because I wouldn't ever want to be like entangled with yeah, a person yeah. that's like that. Because yeah. if that's the way they're treating strangers and if you have some status about it, like you think that you're better than people. I am not. I'm not also, about that. that nobody's life. better. What the New York, the people who serve food professionally in New York City are some of the most admirable people. I also anywhere. Let's can't. not just say New York all right, City. All right, right? You're right. Anywhere. Like, anywhere. Like especially a, in the country right now. Yeah. Being a wait being working at, in a restaurant's a hard fucking job yes. that you do because you need you need to make money and it pays good money. I try to always not make even them good, let be funny. I mean you try to like always leave a good tip. I always see if you, I yeah, whenever I see somebody that doesn't leave a good tip, I get a little uncomfortable, to be honest. hundred percent. I always you ever have like a friend and you're out and you like split the bill and you see the, what the tip they're leaving. You're like, oh, yes. Oh, my. It's like you see something new about a person that you never knew existed. And it like makes you uncomfortable. I'd almost rather see that they're fucking balls or something. You know what I mean? Right. I read something of Deepak Chopra or uh, maybe he said this. I forget who said this. I'm paraphrasing and I don't know who said this. So this is how this is a beautiful quote. Right. Love is you investing in something. Okay. And that's the end of the quote. That's nice. I like that. 
It is. That's you. The things you carry. love, you put a piece of yourself into. Yes. Yes. The love we make is equal to the love we take. The Beatles. <laughs> is that actually all you need is love? The Beatles. <laughs> No, I that love is, is all uh, you need. The Beatles. Love is all you need. The Beatles. <laughs> Yellow submarine. The, the Beatles. Beatles. <laughs> Here comes the sun. Here comes the, the sun. Beatles. The Beatles. Okay. <laughs> this was so beautiful. You know what? We have to remember we talked about romantic love tonight, and love comes in all shapes and forms. And I felt love today. Yes, this was love. I agree. This was this was love. This was nice. We got to hear from a bunch of different people's perspectives. I think it is beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I want everyone to know that we we love you too out there, you know? Yeah, definitely. Just fucking make it through the day. That's probably our fucking motto. <laughs> every, <laughs> every, every day <laughs> from now until who knows when. Everybody in this country has a vaccine. Just make it through the fucking day. Just make and it through thank the you fucking day. For calling in. Yes. And if you liked these this call in episode, let us know. We'll do other loud about nothing plus episodes. That's what yeah. we're calling this genre. Okay. Yeah. This is a loud about nothing plus. Okay. So let us know. Also call in whenever you want. We're, we're doing we'll take calls on a regular episode, right? Yeah, uh, we do. We'll take calls where you could get loud about anything. We won't give you the topic. Uh, and also, please uh, write a f- rate and five star reviews on Apple uh, Podcasts. Right, write a nice review. Give Robbie Boy some advice on how on what to do when the fall rolls around and he's got to go back to middle school. Right, <laughs> the 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 cute boy needs some advice. Okay, he can't get by on his good looks all these years. All right, Robbie, will you be my Valentine? <laughs> yes, Sebastian. Thank you for asking. I never thought you'd ask. I'm a happy man. (laughs) Okay, hit the fucking music.